Good day viewers, this is TechMag TV News. My name is Stephanie Shuja and these are the headlines. CCC claims ZEC has changed their party symbols. CCC activist Mantibaba Veshanduko granted 10,000 US dollar bail. Zim on course to achieve 12 billion mining target. And now in our top stories, the Citizens Coalition for Change has accused the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission of changing its party symbols on ballot papers to be used in the weekend by elections. The Nelson Chamisa led party also lodged a complaint over the printing of ballot papers in black and white, saying this was meant to confuse its supporters on election day. In a letter addressed to ZAC Chief Elections Officer Otwele Slamwana, dated March 21st, CCC National Secretary for Elections Ian Makone said it would be it was disturbing to note that the election management body changes party symbols after being provided with distinctive symbols. The CCC said its symbols has an inscribed description of a yellow square background, circular words surrounding Chamisa's face, and letters with CCC inside a black angle. In view of this, the CCC wishes to express its concern regarding the variation in the party symbol. The yellow background is not reflected on the party logo as witnessed by the party's candidate during the ballot paper verification exercise, Makone wrote. The sample ballot paper, which is not an exact depiction of the party's intent, is a violation of the party's identity, Makoni further stated. During a press briefing in Alari, Makoni said that CCC wrote to ZEC on February the 24th, demanding answers over the printing of ballot papers. The revelation came at a time when ZEC had been taken to task over a number of anomalies on the voters' roll. Among them, the alleged transfer of over 170,000 voters from the awards without their consent. The commission has, however, disputed the allegations, claiming the alleged anomalies were picked from a leaked draft roll that has since been rectified. The printing of ballot papers in the past elections has always been shrouded in secrecy, raising concerns over the credibility of the polls. Contacted for comment yesterday, the ex spokesperson Jasper Mangwana said they were not obliged to print ballot papers in color. ZEC recently announced that he had printed 5,943,300 ballot papers for the by elections. In another top story, Citizens Coalition for Change activist Godfrey Karimbira, popularly known as Matsubaba Vishanduko, was on Wednesday granted 10,000 US dollar bail by Harare magistrate Barbara Mateko. Karimbira was charged with disorderly conduct and undermining police officers. Prosecutor Tapiwa Nashe Shizai has challenged bail, arguing that Kanembira was likely to commit the same offence. Shizai said five police officers are lined up to testify against the activist, but the magistrate said he remained innocent until convicted. He was represented by his lawyer, Douglas Coltart. Kanembira was allegedly brutally assaulted by police officers following his arrest last Thursday. The police were accused of lying after they initially accused Karemira of trying to deface the Buyani Handa statue. The charge was, however, not included in court papers. The Minister of Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage, Honorable Kazembe Kazembe, has urged members of the public to take advantage of the nationwide mobile registration exercise, which starts on April the 1st to September the 30th. Speaking during an introduction of electronic passports decentralization in Bulawayo, Minister Kazembe announced that the Civil Registry Department will be embarking on a nationwide mobile registration exercise. The number of people being attended to per day is, however, way below the hundreds who throng the offices daily to acquire the document. Bribes are openly being demanded upfront by officials who are using some informal traders operating at the civil registry offices as fronts. The exercise will mainly focus on the issuance of births and death certificates and national identity documents. In addition to mobile teams, all static registration offices will remain operational during this period. Accessing identity cards has of late become a terrible nightmare for people in Bulawayo, with only 40 people being served per day. In other local news, Action Register 
General Mr. Henry Machiri has confirmed that since the Civil Registry Department commenced issuance of e-passports on January 18th this year, they have so far produced 26,395 documents. Out of that number, a total of 13,886 are female applicants and 12,509 are male. He said the Civil Registry Department plays a pivotal role in complementing government efforts towards the attainment of Vision 2030 through computerization and decentralization of services for both citizens and non-citizens. The World Bank and the African Development Bank Group have been assisting the Zimbabwean government to implement the renewable energy policy to enhance use of alternative energies. This was revealed yesterday by Energy Minister Secretary Gloria Magombo while addressing delegates at the third edition of the International Renewable Energy Conference and Expo 2022 in Victoria Falls. The conference kicked off yesterday with President Emerson Mnangagwa expected to deliver a keynote address. AFDB senior power engineer based in Johannesburg, Siage Molepo, is expected to speak on financing of renewable energy projects at the conference. In March 2022, President Emerson Mnangagwa launched the National Renewable Energy Program and Biofuels Policy to enhance the adoption and use of renewable energy in a country that has struggled to produce enough energy in the past decade. Zimbabwe, which is currently experiencing power cuts, has shifted its focus to renewable energy to offset the electricity grid deficit. Bulawayo City Council yesterday suspended the 20-hour weekly water shedding schedule as it introduced last month when its main pumps were failing to draw enough water for the city. In a statement, Town Clerk Christopher Dubé said Council had suspended water shedding for areas serviced by the Magwegwe Reservoir. Bulawayo has experienced water challenges for several years due to incessant droughts. Mines and Mining Development Deputy Minister Polite Kamba Mura yesterday claimed that Zimbabwe was on track to achieve the 12 billion mining revenue milestone by 2023, with diamonds said to contribute 1 billion US dollars. Speaking at a platform to discuss the state of readiness by Zimbabwe for the Kimberley Prosex certification scheme in Harare, Kamba Mura said the mining sector contributed 5.2 billion in 2021, up from 2.7 billion the previous year. Zimbabwe is the vice chair for the KPCs for 2022. During Tuesday's cabinet meeting, Mines and Mining Development Minister Winston Chitando said a KP team would be undertaking a review visit to Zimbabwe from May the 8th to the 13th, 2022, to enable Zimbabwe to undergo a review process every five years. In other news, Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has issued a 2.1 billion Zimbabwean dollar treasury bill in a bid to raise funding from the market to support development programs and publish cash flow management. Treasury bills are short-term data securities used by governments when borrowing money from the market and are usually issued by central banks. Meanwhile, the Zimbabwe dollar lost grip against the United States dollar at the Forex auction system on Tuesday, where it traded at 1 US dollar to 138.2 Zimbabwean dollars. According to the RBZ weekly update, this week's auction saw a total of 36.8 million US dollars being looted. The main auction was looted 30.2 million US dollars and a small and medium enterprises got 6.6 million. The main auction was allotted 30.2 million and a small and medium enterprises got 6.6 million US dollars. And now in our entertainment news, multi-award winning Zimbabwean Cape Town, South Africa based musician Jimma Griffin has announced she will be touring the country soon. Dubbed a girl from Harare, Jemma announced the tour on her Instagram page. Jemma said she will reveal some of her artists that are going to be joining the tour. This has been Tech Mag TV News. Please share, like and subscribe as we keep bringing you more top stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.